Hey everyone and welcome to this session. My name is Peter Henry Anderson. I work for TDC and along by my side is my trusty sidekick in tech, Frank Osberg, who got the privilege of getting one of these new Wi-Fi 7 CW9176 internal antennas on an early try. Uh, so we have one of these access points. We're actually going to unbox it and we're going to plug it into the Cisco Meraki dashboard and uh, make it come alive and see how it actually works. So first of all, uh, me and Frank would like to say thank you to Cisco in terms of this great opportunity of testing this Wi-Fi beast of an access point uh, and uh, really looking forward to showing you some small trips, uh, tips and tricks in terms of the, what the access point can do. We unfortunately can't show the MLO feature, which is really, really nice. I will explain it in the video uh, during the mounting session, but check it out in terms of the new devices that can actually do this really cool feature and get the performance out of all, all the radios uh, in, in one go, basically creating uh, multiple highways uh, using the radio uh, wave, waves. So it's really, really nice. Uh, but I am going to show um, with Frank uh, a small test in terms of uh, the mounting angle and the gyro of the access point, which is really, really cool in terms of use of deployment, troubleshooting, tips and tricks, those kind of things. So uh, hang on tight. This is going to be a really cool session, and we're going to jump into the dashboard. As you see in front of me, I have a Cisco Meraki dashboard with all the bells and whistles turned on. <clears throat> Even the new access manager in terms of uh, ICE integration, which is super, super cool. So right now, I've... <clears throat> I've gone into organization, into my, uh, into my inventory. And I'm just gonna type in CW91, and you can actually see that the access point, because the Google search engine is part of, of the Cisco Rocky dashboard, so whenever you start to type things, things are gonna show up in the matching order of what, what kind of, uh, letters and, and numbers you're typing so that's making it super easy to find your things in, in the uh, the vastness of the dashboard that it could be today so you can see here is the uh, the access point we're gonna click it and we're gonna add it to a network i'm gonna choose here and the system rock dashboard in terms of the advanced cloud technology it knows all my networks within my organization and i'm going to click on this one and say add to the network so now you can see it's part of the, the network. It's not been connected yet. Uh, so we're gonna go, as we're on this network where I just added the access point, we can basically go down into wireless and we go into access point and it's actually gonna be on the list right now. And we can see that it has been connected because I'm doing some testing and now it's been disconnected. Here you can see the, the basic, basic log in terms of the, its behavior. Uh, but it's gotten an IP address from last time, uh, and it has a, a tag of recently added. It will always get this tag when it's added for the first time. So if you can't find a device, you can always search on recently added, and all those devices will come forward on a, on a list. So you can keep track of your devices within your dashboard. Because it can be a small dashboard, but it can also be a huge dashboard in terms of enterprise networks. <clears throat> so let's click the access point uh, and jump in and see how it looks. It's not loading any data because even though it says it's online, online it's memory from last time. Um, so now it's just been added. Uh, I haven't connected it yet. Uh, and you can see that in the following uh, video because I've got to post a, a video in terms of me connecting things. But you can see it's trying to load. Nothing's there. It has all the configuration of the SSIDs and the, the firmware, the SIL number. Uh, it's out of date configuration wise because it's not connected. It's not hooked up into the internet so it can connect to the Cisco Meraki DC and get its configuration in terms of my organization and networks. But, and it also has a really cool feature. I love this one. Uh, when you actually mount it, uh, the gyro inside is actually gonna tell you how, how it's um, leveled on the wall or the ceiling. Um, and I had a, a slightly tilt because when you actually connect the four dots on the back and you slide it into the mount, I only slide the two top. So it has kind of like a downward tilt uh upwards and that gives it a, a tilt of 92 degrees so it's very very accurate and if it has a tilt of zero that means it's mounted on the ceiling so that's also super cool in terms of troubleshooting and being an admin in the wi-fi space you can basically get an idea of okay how is this access point placed if, if i'm not on location 
a very good idea is actually to take a, a photo of it uh, and add the the photo in, in in this menu. So you basically, if you're troubleshooting from remote, you can see how the access point is actually mounted in terms of the troubleshooting. It could be mounted wrongly. Uh, it could be mounted beside behind something that is actually blocking it or bouncing the signals. Uh, it's, just, it's seen before. Uh, but okay, anyways, you can see the regulatory domain is uh, enforced to Denmark, and that is automatically uh, being enforced within the uh, software on the uh, the access points when it's actually calling home. You can see the radios are ready to be turned on, 2.4, 5 gigahertz, and 6, 6 gigahertz space. It has a basic indoor profile. It has my IP arrangement, and also the DNS, and it's hooked up to a 1,000 megabit full duplex on my Cisco Meraki 13024X. The X means that the last six ports on this 24-port PoE switch or PoE plus a switch is actually M-Gig technology, and it's put on port 23. If I want to jump directly into this switch, everything is hyperlinked together in the dashboard, so basically just press this this hyperlink here on the switch and I'll jump directly from the access points into the switch and I can see the switch configuration or I can jump directly to the port if I want to. I have IPv6 settings, the gateway settings uh, and the tag recently added, the uptime and when it was last booted, those kind of things. So super cool and super informative into the system rocket dashboard. Next up, let's connect it and see how it works and how it shows up into the dashboard. So as you can see in front of me, we have a mounted CW9164 internal antennas, which is blue on the LED, solid. That means it's online, it's actually serving clients and it's actually getting 2.5 <clears throat> gigs from an MP port on my 130 MS Cisco Meraki switch. We're going to unmount that. Please don't comment uh, in terms of my mounting skills. This is my home house. So this was where it actually benefited the best. Uh, if you do professional installations, I would recommend following Cisco's validated designs in terms of mounting access points and also take into consider consideration in terms of wall mounting and, and the height of the ceiling so you get the best benefit of the signal strength from the access point. They're quite powerful, but keep within the guidelines of the Cisco validated design and, and you won't go wrong. You'll have an ex amazing Wi-Fi experience from these access points. They're totally solid. So, okay, let's look at it. So you can see we have the new CW9176 internal antennas. Just gonna <clears throat> pop it open here. Really nice, neat packaging from Cisco as always. And here it is. Looks like this. Very nice, cool design. Some really cool new features in terms of scanning QR codes. And a really cool feature is in terms of this port, it has been blocked out with a nice little plastic uh, um, mount bracket thingy because people tend to kind of connect that up to the Utoria switch port. That's a big no, no, no. And it won't come online. You need to use this one. This is actually the right port, the TCP port for connections. <clears throat> So, but it has the same uh, four point mounting brackets as the 64 or the 62 or the 66. So basically I can just go uh, pop it up like this, disconnect the 64 access points, also a super cool access point. You won't go wrong by buying that as well, but uh, I would recommend going for the Wi-Fi 7 access points in terms of utilizing the new features on new devices called MLO where it can actually benefit from all the radios into one device. We create a super cool uh, multiple path highway of speed to, uh, to one device. So you can see I hooked up the access point, it turns solid orange. That means that now it has internet connection, goes through the wall to my, my rack where my MS-130 is sitting on, a, and then it's connected up to a Cisco Meraki MX <clears throat> 85 series, series um, which actually has an internet connection, of course. So it's contacting the data center where my account lies in Cisco Meraki organization and my networks. And it's actually communicating saying, I'm the new guy, Frank claimed me in add to the network. I would actually like a configuration and access into the organization and networks. So please let me in. And the cloud data center is going <coughs> to accumulate all that data and it's going to grant this 
new bad boy access to that network and uh, have it come online with the configuration, IP address, DNS, all of those kind of things. It needs to work uh, and operate. So now you can see the LEDs is going into what we call rainbow mode. So it's actually uh, accumulating all the colors of what this access point can, can show. That means it's actually communicating with the data center, the dashboard account. And when it's ready, it will turn solid green. When it's server client, it will turn solid blue. So let's let it sit for a while so it can think. And we'll jump into the dashboard and take it from there. Cracking the dashboard in a few minutes has passed. Uh, it's actually quite quick to, to onboard. Um, so now you can see my list of access points. We dis disconnected the 64 series and we added the 76 Wi-Fi Pro. And we can see that it has come online. And let me see if I can actually shorten that. The last day, let's put it into two hours. In terms of the indicators, you can see here it's green, starting. And let's just press it and see what happens. So we have, now we have a nice new <clears throat> Cisco CW9176 internal antennas, Wi-Fi 7 access point operational and working. You can see data is passing through it. You can see the serving clients here in the timeline. Here on the left-hand side, you can see the two SSIDs been broadcasting. One is not broadcasting because it actually has a tag. So when that tag is triggered, then the broadcasting of this SSID will happen. You could do some really cool things in terms of configuration and, and, and do some uh, timing, scheduling, those kind of things, acting on different behaviors of SSIDs. I'll leave that up to you in terms of experimentation, but it's really nice. You can see the firmware that is running on it, the serial number, the configuration is up to date, what kind of power it's drawing from the switch port in terms of also the standard of the PUE. Uh, 802.3 AT means 30 watts PUE plus, uh, even though it's running in low power mode, I'll figure that one out later, but everything's operational and good. You can see the mounting angle now changed from 92 to 90 because I actually mounted it correctly with all four dots, pushing into the mount and, and shifting it downwards. Uh, and again, excuse my mount on the on the, on the wall video. Um, it's just how it is, and it works, so that's good. Uh, but doing the personal installations, it keeps the Cisco Validate designs and personal advice in terms of Wi-Fi experts doing correct mounting uh, with all the bells and whistles, site survey. So we have the the complete and direct coverage in terms of serving all clients at all times and all different envi environments. It's enforced the regulatory domain in Denmark. You can see the radio settings, 2.4, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz on the different kind of channels in terms of how, how the signal strength and in terms of the the wideness of the megahertz. Uh, it's broadcasting, so that is really cool. It's turning, it's uh, pulling in my basic indoor profile. It has all the IP addresses, uh, default gateway DNS figures. Everything is good. It's operational on this switch, on that port, and so on. And scrolling down, going on to the right side again, you can see the serving clients, but you can also see it's actually checking for basic on onboarding things that always has to be there for a well-functioning device within infrastructure of IT network and also security devices for that for that matter. So DNS, DHP is up and running, ARP, you can see the channel on 2.4. Uh, and also likely to be a problem. So this really nice traffic light system in terms of actually telling you if you're not a a Wi-Fi geek like me, uh, you can kind of get an indication of, okay, 2.4 gigahertz, that's kind of, it's okay, but there is some interference because it's an old uh, it's an old band with a lot of, uh, it's a busy band, let's call it like that, uh, not only Wi-Fi. And you have uh, five gigahertz, that is really nice, acceptable, and also six gigahertz is very acceptable as well. And here you can actually see the wideness of the, uh, of the channels, one to 13. And also the wideness of five gigahertz channels, a lot more, a lot more space, and even six gigahertz and downwards. So this is the data for last day, and you can see it's live because it's moving. So let's uh, try uh, a client and see how that looks from the client perspective towards the access point. So I'm just gonna press on this Google Nest Mini 1, and it's gonna jump directly to that client, to the client page. And you can see in terms of all the uh, 
information and data collected on the access point, what kind of access point it is, channels, those kind of things. There is a, a slight error in terms of, okay, so it's actually reporting a high channel utilization. So it's giving me an error, even though it's online, but 2.4 gigahertz, I need to be mindful in terms of that's a busy band and not using that. And of course I'm using five gigahertz and six gigahertz at home, so I'm not that worried. But that's a nice information in terms of uh, being in a, a Wi-Fi administrator to, for this tool because it's actually showing me the needle in the haystack. So that's really cool. And it's showing me the complete pathway in terms of the device connected to the SSID, connecting to our new lovely Wi-Fi 7 access point, connecting going through the cable to the uh, MS-130 on port 23, actually showing the VLAN as well, showing me all the services of DNS radius what could be uh, configured on, on this uh, network uh, in terms of everything is nice and operational. And again, showing the path of the cable, going into the firewall slash router and going out onto the internet, getting a connection and being online. So that's really nice. Another cool feature in terms of getting visibility, you can tap on the, uh, the topology button and you get a complete topology of the full network that you're in. And you can actually see it's highlighted the MAC address of the Wi-Fi 7 access point. And I just press on this one and it will be highlighted as the new device into the network. And you can see the pathway that I just explained from going from the access point into the cable, all the green lettering or hyperlinks. So you can press on those to jump directly into the ports from the cable perspective down into the switch and the cable to the MX and directly into the MX. 